What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we're taking a look at a pretty cool one from Shirogorov that just came out uh, just a couple days ago. And, uh, or I should say, I put this up on the site a day ago, and uh, just just came out in this colorway. So this is the F3 in a Emerald Micarta with an LMAX blade, a G10 orange backspacer, and a heck of a lot going on with it. So we're going to take a look at this knife today. As a reminder, this is a coffee shop style conversation where we're just taking a look at the knife, going over it, and uh, more than anything, just chatting about it. Chatting knives, doing some comparisons, uh, and all that kind of stuff. As well, please visit my site, bladezilla.ca. That's it right there. And uh, just change the background. Hopefully you guys uh, think that's pretty sweet. The cutting board should look pretty similar. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got a stack of a bunch of these in stock, and uh, there we go. So bladezilla.ca, and uh, everything I have is in Canada. If it's in stock on the site, it's ready to go, and we do ship down to the U.S., and in a lot of cases quicker than some of the other distributors that uh, sell some of these brands down there. So um, anyway, help a guy out, support the channel, and uh, let's get started, I guess, hey? So let's take a look. There we go, F3. Um, you've probably seen, I think I've done a video on the F3 Micarta. I don't know if I've done the G10 one yet, um, but I will do some comparisons. I have both beside me here. Um, I guess let's start with some measurements, some specs, all that good stuff. Uh, we are coming in at eight and five eighths, I believe, right in that kind of range, maybe eight and three quarters, depending on how good your eye is. Blade length of about four inches to the center of the choil, maybe a hair less, you know, three and seven eighths sharpen. So pretty, pretty solid. It's a full size knife. Um, and if you guys remember, uh, Metal Complex actually said the F3 was his favorite Shirogorov knife, and you know he's gone through thousands of knives, and uh, he says the F3 is his fit personal favorite. So we're going to talk about that, we're going to do some comparisons. Um, right off the hop, let's, uh, I guess, do some comparisons for sizes. And uh, I guess the main thing that we want to look at here are other F3s. So there's beautiful green micarta, green canvas micarta. And then we've got a G10 as well. And these are kind of the latest three that are available. And uh, you will see the size comparison by the way I'm leaning the camera, but they are the exact same knife size-wise. So you're kind of seeing right now a couple different variations of the same knife, right? So LMAX on the top, Chromax in the middle, and I believe this one is LMAX on the bottom as well. I just want to double check, make sure I got that right. Uh, do I have LMAX? Yes, LMAX. And, you know, Chromax is really not that different than LMAX. Um, they're very, very similar, just different suppliers, basically, but essentially the same thing, let's be honest. So there's kind of your three comparison. Um, for the sake of this review, they're all, they're all fantastic. Do I have a personal preference? Not really. I always love Canvas Micarta. I think that just looks so cool. And when you get like that uh, soft overkill, it's, uh, it's another one that's done in that same kind of style. It just looks so good and timeless. And uh, they tend to patina over time, which is really cool. So that's, I guess, my preference. But now that I'm looking at these three, you're getting options. And they're all the same price. So you're getting some pretty cool options on all three. And uh, I guess it really just depends. What are you kind of into? Um, I do still have an F3 Outdoor. I don't know if that's actually on the site right now. But I've got a brand new F3 Outdoor uh, that would also be similar to these. But it doesn't have a clip, so it would be a little bit thinner. And I'm not going to bother opening that one up, but uh, yeah, that is just another another one to talk about. And I probably should show some, some close-ups, because I had someone uh, talk about this knife in, uh, in uh, some questions. They thought this was actually more of a micarta knife. And I go, no, no, this one's G10. So this is a sharp G10 handle, versus the other is uh, is not. So super grippy like you put this thing in your hand it is a working knife like you will use it and love it uh, whereas the canvas 
just going to move this down and kind of hide it so it focuses. The canvas is a little smoother, less grippy, more kind of contouring, if that makes sense. I think it's a bit of a softer material in my kind of experience. And then this guy, uh, they're calling it Emerald Micarta. So it's, it's kind of in between the two of them. But it's certainly louder. It's uh, I love that it's orange on the uh, on the backspacer. It's got that inlaid G10 kind of uh, pivot there, so it's cool. It's a unique color. You know, you don't see a lot of these when it comes to Shirogorov. They tend to kind of do a lot of muted themes, and it's kind of cool to see them breaking out of the mold and doing something a little bit different but uh, kind of staying true to their heritage with the multi-row bearings and uh, similar steels. But that would be kind of it for the three. If, uh, you know, I, I should honestly just like do a photo op of this because it's very rare that I have uh, the three all together. But um, anyway, it's just the timing of these videos. Um, and uh, it is what it is, but beautiful knives nonetheless. So I'm gonna get these away. And then uh, what we're going to do is kind of do some general comparisons with the normal uh, production range that we, we've been doing, you know, forever. So let's start off with uh, the Stellar. So there's your Stellar Touch, uh, which uh, is a little bit smaller handle-wise, very similar, but shorter blade. Um, these guys should be 95, and I think this one, was it 90 mil or 85? I can't, I can't recall, but a little, little bit different. And then we go to the Neon, and uh, you guys have all seen my Neon Zero with the uh, cool, uh, I think this one's called a Hydronian Neon, so it's uh, I've had this one forever, uh, but it's essentially a Neon Zero, exact same, but size-wise, there's your three. Uh, and then we could probably even kind of compare like an F95, which, or a Quantum, let's grab a Quantum. Uh, let's, there we go, there's a blue, blue quantum, with a quantum ursus, which is, uh, the first quantum ursus that I've had with multi-row bearings, which is cool, and then my other production Hattie, all the same size knife, uh, but I will say this, like, a Hattie, remember, is a, a F95 with a carbon front scale, the flipper tab is uh, not built into the handle and the tip So remember this so flipper tab up top here right in front of the pivot But still centered but not built into the tip Quantum Your flipper tab is built in a little more forward shoots out a little harder, but it's kind of built into the frame so always remember that but in terms of the Layout on the three knives pay attention to the handle profile Okay and this is the three variances and the, the difference between all three. So if we look at the F3, it's very much an F95 kind of got that belly in it, right? It's got the little deep spot behind the pivot and a nice rolled back. Very similar to the F95, which is why it probably fits a lot of people really nicely. Whereas the Quantum, it's a little shallower behind the flipper tab. And then it's a longer, less rolled, but no belly on it, right? So just keep that in mind. You know, two different knives, but they're kind of the two popular ones in the line. The Quantum and the F95, or in this case a Hattie. Um, and then in terms of other F3s, I think I've shown them all. I'm not going to go into too many details of, uh, of the high-end pieces. It's not what we're here to see. We're here to see production knives. We can do the Quantium as well, which is a uh, G10 front version of a quantum so quantium it's a bit of a play on words there but same thing multi-row bearings super cool knife um, great deal actually on these they do it in a bunch of different colors black navy um, like this a green and i think there might be another of the tan which uh, i have the tan one right here another cool knife or beige or whatever you want to call it i love this this is so subtle it's really uh they're, they're kind of getting in to those colorways a little bit more. But uh, anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about this knife and what makes it so cool. So, you know, looking at the obvious, we can see the, the, you know, the milling on the handle looks great. It's, like I said, between the other two in terms of the aggression level on it. 
It's a really cool color, and you can kind of see as I roll the knife around here, some different colors are popping out as the light's hitting it, based on the micro milling that's on it. We've got the regular pattern of the F3 that's kind of lined in and, and ground down on the handle here. Not ground, but milled down on the handle. Hopefully you can kind of see that line that's kind of right across and contoured. And then on the top here by the flipper tab, same kind of thing. A nice little contoured uh, some mill work as well. Now, some of the earlier, uh, or not earlier, some of the shear gore in terms of budget level, they tend to forego the use of a backspacer. And uh, that was evident on, let's say, like an F95 Crazy, Marca Crazy Micarta, which is like, okay, we're going to do a titanium knife and we're going to put a Chromax blade on it to keep costs down. Well, we are not going to put a backspacer on it because they're too expensive. We're going to do standoffs instead, which it's a great knife. This one's single row bearings instead of multi row bearings, which is their entry level um, bearing system. Um, it's a great knife. Honest to God, great knife. Um, love it. Absolutely love it. But it's not LMAX because LMAX has a bit of a Coca-Cola brand name vibe to it. Uh, and I think, I think I might be wrong. I, I don't want to quote this, but I think Bowl, I think Boulder makes LMAX. Um, so it's, it's got a brand name behind it where it's Chromax is done in Japan, I think. Um, so yeah, you've got the LMAX blade that, you know, gets some, some coolness factor to it. Um, but you, when we're talking about that backspacer, it's like they could have easily made this and done nothing and just put a standoff in there. And I think it would kind of look half finished. Whereas they put a G10 backspacer in here, which, you know, is cool because it's orange. You know, could they have done a different color on this emerald? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if there would have been a better color to kind of utilize than orange on the on the G10 side of things. Um, especially because they already did the orange one on the uh, green canvas micarta. And I think they're the same orange. Let's just take a peek. No, they are slightly different. One's a little brighter, actually. Uh, or maybe it's just a different batch, but uh, from my perspective, this one is a little bit brighter on the right. And size-wise, they should be the same. Yeah, but anyway, that's cool. I never knew that. It's a little more subdued on this, so they did change it. Um, you know, they could have easily just done nothing and left the stand off there and just kept it low price. Um, but they kind of finish it off nicely with that. They still give you that option to run a lanyard hole in the back here as well which is cool. And I love it because from the side, it, you know, there's no holes in the knife. It's very complete and looks very good. Whereas the Stellar that I showed earlier, that's kind of their knock is that uh, you see through it with the lanyard hole. And that's always been their little, eh, right? It's a design thing. I personally don't care. I love it still just as much. But on their higher end knives, they've been going to the, um, backspacer that's kind of built in to the lanyard or the lanyard hole that's built into the backspacer right it's kind of just tucked away nicely and you don't see it which is awesome um so they're doing that still on this which is awesome so you get the option and let's be honest if you end up dropping it busting it you replace a backspacer instead of a scale right um, and i should say i'll grab that f95 again just to illustrate my point and what i'm talking about um, when they use a standoff, your lanyard hole is now on one side instead of two. And if you broke that, you would need a front scale. So just food for thought, not a big deal, but uh, something to think about. So I think that's, uh, that's really nicely done. Blade's perfectly centered. It's a sure gore off, guys. It should be perfectly centered. Uh, and funny enough, I find the uh, the knives that are not perfectly centered tend to be the higher end Shiro Groffs in the custom division, like the Stellaris. Uh, that's a, that's a different conversation, but uh, for some reason those Stellarises just do not want to be centered ever. Um, in hand, you know, it's good. It, it's it's an F3. It's it's uh, Metal Complex's favorite knife, and there's a reason for it. Perfect jimping. The jimping is right in the right spot you've got a flat top on the blade that goes right down to the tip that's what she said and uh you know you can choke up on it use it for those small slicing tasks but for the most part it's just a comfortable handle 
it's contoured all around and uh, no hot spots. All the edge work is done. Nice and rounded off. Just a beautifully well made knife. And if I was taking a knife hunting, it'd probably be an F3. Or, um, might even be a 111. Or like a thick, like an F95 Zero. If they ever make that again, that'd be a great hunting knife. But for a user, you tend it tends to be knives like this. Uh, because it's you're going to be able to buy it for a fair price, use it, it's going to last forever. Maybe it's the first knife, knife you open up and take apart, play with, you know. And then, you know, users of these are like a couple hundred bucks less. They hold their value so well. Um, obviously on the inside of this we can see it's a liner lock, which is awesome. Super solid. As well, I th don't think this one's milled, and I don't think the others are either on uh, on the other ones. Let me just double check this. So I'm just going to show you the inside of this. If it wants to focus, come on man, work with me here. Throw me a freaking bone. Yeah, this one's uh, smooth on the inside as well. What I'm looking for is like the inside milling on the frame. So that one is also the same. And I would expect this to be identical as well because it's the same price point. But same thing on the inside, no additional milling. How would that look if it was a high-end knife? Well, let's go back to the soft overkill and look at what that looks like on the inside. If it wants to ever focus, and you can kind of see it's a different conversation. Lots of milling, lots of pockets, lots of skeletonization, lots of weight reduction. That's what they're doing here. So on their entry-level pieces, you know, you can have two of these for the price of one of those. So how do they do that? Well, they don't do all the refinements on it, right? The G10 backspacer, for example. That could be a nice, fancy, you know, titanium, tumble, polished, whatever. But no, you know, G10, I think it's up to the task. It does a good job. As I roll this knife on its side, you should see the lock bar and how it pops up and how it's elevated right here. That in your hand is super, super smooth, super comfortable. And when you go to reach in, the bevel on it is just perfect. So, um, you know, locking, unlocking, it's just super smooth. No issues. And, and that's something that's found across a lot of their knives, other than some of their collab pieces. Um, I think that's just what Shergroff likes to do, is elevate the locking mechanism for comfort. And when they don't, they tend to put a little groove on this side to kind of give you smoother access to it, to make it feel elevated when it might not actually be. Now, if we look on the engagement on these, um, I remember I put on one of the used knives um, that was traded back to me, um, I put light lockup. And what I'm referring to here is, Sheer Goroffs are notoriously known to have very light lockup, very early lockup. Maybe that's a better word to use, early lockup, um, because it appears they're like 15%. And they are, but they don't have to be more than that. Like a Chris Reeves, um, they tend to be a lot more than that. So if I grab like my Sebenza here and I look at it and like, look at the lockup on this, how far over that lock bar is on the blade. It's ridiculous. Like it's actually, that's their mechanism that reminder. Like Chris Reeves came up with, or Chris Reeve came up with the, I think they called it like the Reeve lock or something but they like to go like 90%, 80%, 75%. They go full balls deep. That's what she said. Super cool knife. I love the Sebenza. Sure go off. Doesn't do that. They go very light. And I believe, I believe they've got a lock bar insert on this. They should. Yeah, they've got a lock bar insert here, uh, which I think, am I crazy? I see a detent ball. Because typically their lock bar insert will double as an over travel stop, but in this case the frame itself will act as that. And I can't tell if there's another material in here or not. Or if they just would rather replace the entire side of it if they're in the event, but I can't really tell from uh, without taking this apart. And it's a little dark for my eye, but I'm assuming there's a lock bar insert in there. Uh, which, let's just assume there is. You know, you're tuning the material between the titanium frame and the L-Max blade, or M390 blade and titanium frame, or so on and so forth, and you just create it so that there's no uh, lock stick. 
and it makes it so that it can wear out and uh, replace it. The multi-row bearing system will probably say on the inside of the frame somewhere here. Uh, yeah, you can see it right above my pointer finger here. MRBS, multi-row bearing system. And if you're new to Shure Groff, uh, their bearing systems kind of start at SRBS, single row bearing system. Then they go, which is uh, single bearing in a circular track. Then they go to multi-row bearings, which is two or three bearings in a line, kind of in a pinwheel pattern with some exceptions. Uh, to that being like Sinkovich layout, which is more of like a, they call it Mickey Mouse, which is like two ears and a nose in a kind of weird pattern, like found on uh, the BIOS and the Kami. Um, and then above that, they go into roller bearings. Roller bearings are needle bearings, so think of them as hot dogs in a circle. And then there's, and those are single row, bear, single row roller bearings, and then there's double row roller bearings. Um, if you've made it this far, double row roller bearings are extremely expensive, typically found on their full custom or full custom knives, with very few exceptions. They are the highest end system they make, and uh, they feel as smooth as the closest shave you'll ever get. Very, very cool feel to them. Um, for me, I love multi-row bearings. I love these. I love the Sinkovich multi-row bearings. I love the single row bearings. I love the roller bearings. I love them all. They all feel a little bit different and uh, they all have pros and cons in that, uh, you know, they're, you know, multi-row bearings, super easy to work on. You know, they're, they're built in a stacked system. So when you take the layer off, you know, you've got bearings in a track, you take the blade off, bearings sit in a track. It's very simple but they're loose balls. So if you lose them, it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> so don't lose them. Um, as a reminder, if you wanna take these guys apart, they have the Shergroff style hardware. Um, and also I, I have someone, someone mentioned to me, uh, oh, the way you know that a knife's never been opened is if the, uh, the pivots oppose each other, or the two uh, screws oppose each other. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know what, Shear Groff, they've been kind of trying to match the two. I wouldn't say that's the only thing to look at if a knife has been opened at, because I've got special editions here that are brand new that they don't line up either. So, uh, you know what, it's, I guess, a rule of thumb, sure. Maybe on their production knives that might be a thing, they like to line that up, but don't worry too much about it. Um, if you do want to open these up, which I highly recommend, if you're going to uh, kind of tune it, uh, which is awesome. You have, you have the ability to, and uh, certainly can. You know, you could probably use a screwdriver. You're going to mar the hardware, right? If you do use a screwdriver, so get the get a shear grower off tool. They look like this, and you can also get them in like a like a pen or something. But this is their common one. It's called the Cyber Tool, and it comes with both bits um, that you need to work on a knife like this. If you don't have that, you can use a penny. You know, I have uh, this from my hinder days. I don't have any hinders with me, do I? I don't think I have any more hinders, but I had a penny sitting here. And uh, the reason I use a penny on hinders is because it's a softer material than the hardware that uh, they use, right? And these are, I think, I don't know if these are steel or if they're titanium. They should be titanium, I would assume. But uh, when it, you use a soft material, you're not gonna mar it up. You're gonna cut into the penny first. So, uh, these guys are pretty simple to work on, right? two, two screws, and then on the back uh, you also have the screw on the clip, which uh, I'm assuming you wouldn't be messing with that, there's no real need to take this one off. The milling on the clip is incredible, and, and right in line with their high-end production pieces, and if you ever look underneath this one, it's also uh, nice, very nicely done. Shurgroff has a way of, uh, the more you look at their knife, uh, over time, the more you're going to find things about it that you love. Especially on their high-end production pieces. Uh, it just gets better with time. As you see little details, that'll just blow your mind slowly. In spots that you... they shouldn't have details, but they do. Um, if you look behind the flipper tab as well, you'll see there's some real nice, uh, I guess, bevel work done. So when you flip this guy open, I'm just going to dummy it. Um, when you flip it open, your finger will not hit a tough spot, no cutting, nothing like that. Tolerances are very tight, as expected. And um, yeah, it's just a great solid knife. 
Now, another thing to pay attention to is, you know, this is an F3, so I, I would put this as the F95 of uh, liner locks. So, uh, you know, the, the pivot system here, or the flipper tab, is basically over the center, maybe a little forward. As you move that forward and back from the center of the pivot, think of it as changing gears on your bicycle wheel on the back. The bigger the, uh, the bigger the cog, the easier it is. So the further you move this back behind the pivot, and that's the only direction we're looking at this as, is behind the pivot, the slower the, uh, the kick out will be. So if I look at like a knife like uh, the Tom Mayo Dr. Death, I thought I had one here. There we go. Where the flipper tab is well behind, right? It's a slower kick out, right? Whereas if you push it in front of it, it flies out like lightning. So uh, just, you know, food for thought. It's kind of right in the middle. And that's why I think this is kind of just like a really good starting spot for a Shira Goroff. You know, you get a feel of what's a medium detent on a Shira Goroff. You know, what's a medium kick out on a Shira Goroff. You know, the, the ratios and whatnot. But a uh, really cool knife. I, I think this one is going to be a big hit. You know, I, it's the first time I've seen them do an emerald color. And uh, I just love that they're starting to mix things up and kind of bring some of their high-end technology down to a price point that's affordable and makes for a great user knife. You know, you're not going to feel guilty using this. You're not going to worry about it. It's going to be durable as hell. It's just a great little knife. Not little, it's a four inch knife. Um, I did not weigh this. Um, let me grab my little scale if you guys are curious. And I will get a weight on this. Because why not? It feels like four and a half ounces, but who knows? Maybe it's lighter. Four seven, fairly close today. No big deal. Four eight. So yeah, it's it's not super light, but let's just say average four seven ish, four eight ish. It's uh, it's a solid knife though, and that's the whole point here. It's a solid knife. You know, and you get the L Max, and the L Max is a total bonus in my opinion. Like that's. Uh, that's what you want because it's got the brand name it just looks so cool and I love how I love, I'm just looking over this I love how when you look at it, it's like all the little angles capture the light and change color and you get these light spots that pop out in the back here you know on the cut lines it's all light and then you get the light colors that are hiding inside the scales it just looks so sharp and I have to say it, man, like, I'm a Shirogoroff whore, and I love the milling work that they do on these clips. I could just, I, like, I should just do, like, a, a website for Shirogoroff called Only Clips, and just show the clips, because they do such a good job of it. Or, like, Instagram Only Clips or something. Because it's just so nice, and, like, a knife at this price point, like, if I grab another... If I grab that F95 NL, no, that one doesn't really have anything fancy, or the Hattie, that one's probably beautiful as well. You know, at this price point, the milling's like dynamite. You don't get that with Chris Reeves, you don't get that with Hinder, you don't get that with uh, Spartan. You know, even Koenigs, like this is cheaper than a Koenig, right? And Koenigs aren't even like this. They're close, but they're not, you know. Um, some of them can be, uh, I guess. Um, what's another brown? Craig Brown. His knives are really nicely done as well. But they're more money. In terms of a user, man, this is a killer user. The action on the multi-row bearing system is, is float home. And they've been putting like a wax on them, so over time they wear in a little bit. This one actually feels really nice. And uh, pretty good, actually. It's about as good as it's going to get. Just floats. That's what they're known for. And uh, the whole point of it is this. If I park this at an angle, it's not going to drop on your finger. Okay? And this is the angle this blade's sitting at right now. I can put it anywhere you want. Put it here. It's not going to fall. But if I give it a little, the, sli the slightest little nudge, it's tuned to fall. And that's just... It's a unique experience. You don't get with Hinder. You don't get with... Chris Reeves, especially Chris Reeves, my god. <laughs> Very different knives, and that's not, we're not comparing fidget factors, like this is a flipper. Um, 
it's just a completely different experience. Um, what else? So I've talked about the fit and hand. The uh, the backspacer feels great in, in hand as well. The jimping's usable. Nice flat top. LMAX blade. Sure go off bare on the blade. I would like that elsewhere, obviously, because that's in the cutting path, but you can't win them all. LMAX as well is written on the blade. Um, you know, in a perfect world, I would like that written right about there somewhere instead, but that's fine. It's a, it's a name brand and it looks good. Um, what else? Skeletonization or lack thereof is fine. Not a big deal on a knife at this price point. G10 backspacer is a bonus. Clip is unbelievable. I love the attention to detail on it. And uh, I think it's a home run knife. I think it looks great. The color's great. I really don't have any issues with it. You know, between the three, which one would I pick? I really don't know. They all feel different. Honest to God. You know, you have smooth kind of canvas, right? Micarta, which, uh, you know, feels softer in hand, but it's smooth. Whereas this is kind of like a medium level, um, medium level toughness to it or medium level grip. Whereas this G10 one is a uh, very aggressive grip in my opinion and feels sharp on the hand. Probably more suitable to like heavier duty tasks or maybe wearing with a thick glove. Um, but they're all kind of the same knife. They're all amazing and uh, they're all F3s. So there's kind of your quick overview of, uh, of the Emerald, Micarta, um, Sure Goroff with LMAX. Like just beautiful, three beautiful knives. I couldn't pick one. It's like, which, uh, which child is your favorite? Uh, you can't. So uh, I apologize, but love all three and I think they're great. And I'm just fortunate enough that I can kind of show you all three while they're here. Uh, which could change any second because things just go uh, go quickly these days. It's uh, really surprising sometimes. So um, it's kind of fun to have some of them in-house. And uh, man, that one's cool. I love the bright orange on that. That's cool. But yeah, there you go. There's your emerald. And if you have any questions, please comment below or um, send me a message. You know, email me. Visit the site bladezilla.ca and uh, DM me, YouTube me, TikTok me, whatever you got to do. Um, love chatting knives first and foremost. If this knife is for you, then awesome. If not, let's just chat knives, let's chat blades. And, uh, you know, I'm an enthusiast more than anything. And, uh, you know, would love to get to, to know you guys. That's what it's all about, in my opinion. And the knives tend to come second. But, uh, yeah, that is the F3 Emerald Micarta with LMAX. Thanks for stopping by guys and have a good week and I think I'm dropping this on Christmas Day so Merry Christmas and uh, and have a happy holidays and, uh, and a happy new year so uh, we will talk soon. Appreciate you guys. See ya. Peace.